Next chapter is, A Modern, Thriving Society. In this chapter you will learn about the population, and culture of the UK. The start of the chapter shows you where the major cities, of the UK are. You should be sure you can identify the various cities, such as Leeds, and Bradford, confidently. Because the UK is a multicultural country, you will also have to know the sizes of the different ethnic, and religious groups in the UK, as well as their main festivals. Britain's recent sporting success at the Olympics features heavily, so focus on who won medals, and for what as well as the general information about sport in the UK. Make sure you familiarize yourself with the poems, films, books, and other works listed too, as well as the artists, composers, architects, authors, poets and other famous people. You should also familiarize yourself with the extracts of poems provided, and be able to recognize the famous landmarks at the end of the chapter. First topic of this chapter is, the UK today. The UK today is a more diverse society than, it was 100 years ago, in both ethnic, and religious terms. Post-war immigration means, that nearly 10% of the population has a parent, or grandparent born outside the UK. This section will tell you about the different parts of the UK, and some of the important places. The UK is located in the northwest of Europe. The longest distance on the mainland is from, John O'Groats on the north coast of Scotland, to Land's End in the southwest corner of England. It is about 870 miles, approximately 1,400 kilometers. Most people live in towns, and cities but much of Britain is still countryside. Many people continue to visit the countryside for holidays, and for leisure activities such as walking, camping, and fishing. Cities of the UK First, England. Famous cities like London, Birmingham, Liverpool, Leeds, Sheffield, Bristol, Manchester, Bradford, Newcastle upon Tyne, Plymouth, Southampton, Norwich, are located in England. Second, Wales. Cities like Wales, Cardiff, Swansea, Newport, are located in Wales. Third, Scotland, cities like Edinburgh, Glasgow, Dundee, Aberdeen, are located in Scotland. Fourth, Northern Ireland. Cities like, Belfast, Derry, Bangor are part of Northern Ireland. London, the capital of England, and the United Kingdom, is a 21st century city with history stretching back to Roman times. At its center stand, the imposing Houses of Parliament, the iconic Big Ben Clock Tower, and Westminster Abbey, site of British monarch coronations. Across the Thames River, the London Eye Observation Wheel provides panoramic views of the South Bank Cultural Complex, and the entire city. The currency in the UK is, the pound sterling. There are 100 pence in a pound. The denominations of currency are, first, coins which are called pence. The singular of pence is penny. The symbol for the penny is P. Second, notes which are called pounds. Northern Ireland and Scotland have their own banknotes, which are valid everywhere in the UK. However, shops and businesses do not have to accept them. Languages and dialects. There are many variations in language, in the different parts of the UK. The English language has many accents, and dialects. In Wales, many people speak Welsh, a completely different language from English, and it is taught in schools and universities. In Scotland, Gaelic, again, a different language, is spoken in some parts of the Highlands, and Islands, and in Northern Ireland some people speak Irish Gaelic. People in the UK are living longer, than ever before. This is due to improved living standards, and better health care. There are now a record number of people aged 85, and over. This has an impact on the cost of pensions, and health care. Ethnic diversity. The UK population is ethnically diverse, and changing rapidly, especially in large cities such as London. It is not always easy to get an exact picture of the ethnic origin, of all the population. There are people in the UK with ethnic origins, from all over the world. In surveys, the most common ethnic description chosen is white, which includes people of European, Australian, Canadian, New Zealand, and American descent. Other significant groups are those of Asian, black, and mixed descent. Next topic of this chapter is, religion. The UK is historically a Christian country. In the 2009, citizenship survey, 70% of people identified themselves as, Christian. Much smaller proportions identified themselves as, Muslim, 4%, Hindu, 2%, Sikh, 
1%, Jewish, or Buddhist, both less than half a percent, and 2% of people followed another religion. There are religious buildings for other religions, all over the UK. This includes Islamic mosques, Hindu temples, Jewish synagogues, Sikh gurudwaras, and Buddhist temples. Christian churches. In England, there is a constitutional link between church and state. The official church of the state is the Church of England, called the Anglican Church in other countries, and the Episcopal Church in Scotland and the United States. It is a Protestant church and has existed since the Reformation in the 1530s. The monarch is the head of the Church of England. The spiritual leader of the Church of England is the Archbishop of Canterbury. The monarch has the right to select the Archbishop and other senior church officials, but usually the choice is made by the Prime Minister and a committee appointed by the Church. Several Church of England bishops sit in the House of Lords. Patron Saints Days England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland each have a national saint, called a patron saint. Each saint has a special day. 1st March, St. David's Day, Wales. 17th March, St. Patrick's Day, Northern Ireland. 23rd April, St. George's Day, England. 30th November, St. Andrew's Day, Scotland. While the Patron Saints Days are no longer public holidays, in England and Wales, they are still celebrated. Parades and small festivals are held all over the two countries. Next topic of this chapter is, Customs and Traditions. The Main Christian Festivals Christmas Day 25th of December, celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. It is a public holiday. Many Christians go to church on, Christmas Eve, 24th of December, or on Christmas Day itself. Boxing Day is the day after Christmas Day, and is a public holiday. Second, Easter. It takes place in March, or April. It marks the death of Jesus Christ on, Good Friday and is rising from the dead on Easter Sunday. Both Good Friday, and the following Monday, called Easter Monday, are public holidays. Other religious festivals celebrated in UK are First, Diwali. It normally falls in October, or November and lasts for five days. It is often called, the Festival of Lights. It is celebrated by Hindus, and Sikhs. It celebrates the victory of good over evil, and the gaining of knowledge. There are different stories about, how the festival came about. There is a famous celebration of Diwali in Leicester. Second, Hanukkah. It is in November, or December and is celebrated for eight days. It is to remember the Jews' struggle for, religious freedom. On each day of the festival a candle is lit on a stand of eight candles, called a menorah, to remember the story of the festival, where oil that should have lasted only a day did so for eight. Third, Eid al-Fitr. It celebrates the end of Ramadan, when Muslims have fasted for a month. They thank Allah for giving them the strength to complete the fast. The date when it takes place changes every year. Muslims attend special services and meals. Fourth, Holi. The celebration of Holi is noticeable at places that witness a large congregation of Indians. The British city of Leicester is particularly known for its love for celebrating Indian festivals. Excitement reaches its peak when the occasion is that of celebrating, a joyous festival like Holi. Other festivals, and traditions followed in UK. First, New Year, 1st January, is a public holiday. People usually celebrate on the night of, 31st December, called New Year's Eve. Second, Valentine's Day, 14th February, is when lovers exchange cards, and gifts. Sometimes people send anonymous cards to someone they secretly admire. 3rd. Halloween, 31st October, is an ancient festival, and has roots in the pagan festival to mark the beginning of winter. Young people will often dress up in frightening costumes, to play trick, or treat. 4th. Mothering Sunday, or Mother's Day, is the Sunday three weeks before Easter. Children send cards, or buy gifts for their mothers. 5th. Father's Day is the third Sunday in June. Children send cards, or buy gifts for their fathers. Next topic of this chapter is, sports. Sports of all kinds play an important part, in many people's lives. There are several sports, that are particularly popular in the UK. Many sporting events take place at major stadiums such as, Wembley Stadium in London, and the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. The UK has hosted the Olympic Games, on three occasions, 1908, 1948, and 2012. The main Olympic site for the 2012 Games, was in Stratford, East London. 
the British team was very successful, across a wide range of Olympic sports, finishing third in the medal table. Notable British sportsmen, and women. First. Sir Roger Bannister. He was the first man in the world to run a mile, in under four minutes, in 1954. Second. Sir Jackie Stewart. He is a Scottish former racing driver, who won the Formula One World Championship three times. Third. Sir Steve Redgrave. He won gold medals in rowing in five consecutive Olympic Games, and is one of Britain's greatest Olympians. Fourth. Sir Ian Botham. He captained the English cricket team, and holds a number of English test cricket records, both for batting, and for bowling. Fifth. Jessica Ennis. She is an athlete. She won the 2012 Olympic gold medal in the heptathlon, which includes seven different track and field events. She also holds a number of British athletics records. Sixth. Jane Torville. She won gold medals for ice dancing, at the Olympic Games in 1984, and in four consecutive world championships. Seventh. Dame Ellen MacArthur. She is a yachtswoman, and in 2004 became the fastest person to sail around the world single-handed. Eighth. Ali Simmons. He is a Paralympian who won gold medals for swimming at the 2008 and 2012 Paralympic Games and holds a number of world records. She was the youngest member of the British team at the 2008 Games. Ninth. Bobby Moore. He captained the English football team that won the World Cup in 1966. Tenth. Andy Murray. He is a Scottish tennis player who in 2012 won the men's singles in the US Open. He is the first British man to win a singles title in a Grand Slam tournament since 1936. In the same year, he won Olympic gold and silver medals and was runner-up in the men's singles at Wimbledon. 11th. Baroness Tanny Gray Thompson. She is an athlete who uses a wheelchair and won 16 Paralympic medals, including 11 gold medals, in races over five Paralympic Games. She won the London Marathon six times and broke a total of 30 world records. Let us now discuss about, sports of UK. First. Cricket. Cricket originated in England, and is now played in many countries. Games can last up to five days, but still result in a draw. The idiosyncratic nature of the game, and its complex laws are said to reflect the best of the British character, and sense of fair play. You may come across expressions such as, rain stopped play, batting on a sticky wicket, playing a straight bat, bold a googly, or it's just not cricket which have passed into everyday usage. The most famous competition is the Ashes, which is a series of test matches played between England and Australia. Second. Football. Football is the UK's most popular sport. It has a long history in the UK, and the first professional football clubs were formed in the late 19th century. England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland each have separate leagues in which clubs representing different towns and cities compete. The English Premier League attracts a huge international audience. Many of the best players in the world play in the Premier League. Each country in the UK also has its own national team that competes with other national teams across the world in tournaments such as the FIFA World Cup and the UEFA European Football Championships. England's only international tournament victory was at the World Cup of 1966, hosted in the UK. Football is also a popular sport to play in many local communities, with people playing amateur games every week, in parks all over the UK. Third, Rugby. Rugby originated in England in the early 19th century, and is very popular in the UK today. There are two different types of rugby, which have different rules, union, and league. Both have separate leagues, and national teams in England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Teams from all countries compete, in a range of competitions. The most famous rugby union competition is, the Six Nations Championship between England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, France, and Italy. The Super League is the most well-known, rugby league competition. Fourth. Horse racing. There is a very long history of horse racing in Britain, with evidence of events taking place, as far back as Roman times. The sport has a long association with royalty. There are race courses, all over the UK famous horse racing events include, Royal Ascot, a five-day race meeting in Berkshire attended by, members of the Royal Family, the Grand National at Aintree near Liverpool, and the Scottish Grand National at Ayr. There is a National Horse Racing Museum in Newmarket, Suffolk. Fifth. Skiing. Skiing, is increasingly popular in the UK many people go abroad to ski, and there are also dry ski slopes throughout the UK skiing on snow, 
may also be possible during the winter. There are five ski centres in Scotland, as well as, Europe's longest dry ski slope near Edinburgh. Next topic of this chapter is, Arts, and Culture. Music. Music is an important part of British culture, with a rich, and varied heritage. It ranges from classical music, to modern pop. There are many different venues, and musical events that take place across the UK. Classical music has been popular in the UK, for many centuries. Henry Purcell was the organist, at Westminster Abbey. He wrote church music, operas and other pieces, and developed a British style distinct from that elsewhere in Europe. He continues to be influential on, British composers. The German-born composer, George Frederick Handel spent many years, in the UK, and became a British citizen in 1727. He wrote the water music for King George I, and music for the royal fireworks for his son, George II. Both these pieces continue to be very popular. More recently, important composers include Gustav Holst, whose work includes The Planets, a suite of pieces themed around the planets of the solar system. He adapted Jupiter, part of the planet's suite, as the tune for I Vow to Thee My Country, a popular hymn in British churches. Benjamin Britten is best known for his operas, which include Peter Grimes and Billy Budd. He also wrote A Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, which is based on a piece of music by Purcell, and introduces the listener to the various different sections of an orchestra. He founded the Albra Festival in Suffolk, which continues to be a popular music event, of international importance. Ralph Vaughan Williams, wrote music for orchestras, and choirs. He was strongly influenced by, traditional English folk music. Next we will discuss, theatre. London's West End, also known as Theatreland, is particularly well known. The Mousetrap, a murder mystery play by Dame Agatha Christie, has been running in the West End since 1952, and has had the longest initial run of any show in history. Gilbert, and Sullivan wrote comic operas, often making fun of popular culture, and politics. These operas include HMS Pinafore, The Pirates of Penzance, and The Mikado. Gilbert, and Sullivan's work is still often staged by professional, and amateur groups. The Laurence Olivier Awards, take place annually at different venues in London. There are a variety of categories, including Best Director, Best Actor, and Best Actress. The awards are named, after the British actor Sir Laurence Olivier, later Lord Olivier. Next, Art. During the Middle Ages, most art had a religious theme, particularly wall paintings in churches, and illustrations in religious books. Much of this was lost after the Protestant Reformation, but wealthy families began to collect other paintings, and sculptures. Many of the painters working, in Britain in the 16th, and 17th centuries were from abroad, for example, Hans Holbein, and Sir Anthony Van Dyck. British artists, particularly those painting portraits, and landscapes, became well known from the 18th century on wards. Some famous British artists are First, John Petz. He was a Welsh artist, best known for his engravings, and stained glass. Second, Thomas Gainsborough was a portrait painter, who often painted people in country, or garden scenery. Third, Joseph Turner. He was an influential landscape painter, in a modern style. He is considered the artist who, raised the profile of landscape painting. Architecture of UK. The architectural heritage of the UK is rich, and varied. In the Middle Ages, great cathedrals, and churches were built, many of which still stand today. Examples are the cathedrals in Durham, Lincoln, Canterbury, and Salisbury. The White Tower in the Tower of London, is an example of a Norman castle keep, built on the orders of William the Conqueror. Cenotaph in London, Whitehall. In the 20th century, Sir Edwin Lutyens had an influence, throughout the British Empire, he designed New Delhi, to be the seat of government in India. After the First World War, he was responsible for many war memorials throughout the world, including the Cenotaph in Whitehall. The Cenotaph, is the site of the annual Remembrance Day service attended by the Queen, politicians, and foreign ambassadors. Literature The UK has a prestigious literary history, and tradition. The Man Booker Prize for Fiction is awarded annually for the best fiction novel written, by an author from the Commonwealth, Ireland, or Zimbabwe. It has been awarded since 1968. Notable authors, and writers. First, Graham Greene. He wrote novels often influenced by his religious beliefs, including The Heart of the Matter, The Honorary Consul, Brighton Rock, and Our Man in Havana. Second, Jane Austen. 
she was an English novelist. Her books include Pride, and Prejudice and Sense, and Sensibility. Her novels are concerned with marriage, and family relationships. Many have been made into television programs, or films. Third, Thomas Hardy. He was an author, and poet. His best-known novels focus on rural society, and include Far From the Madding Crowd, and Jude the Obscure. Fourth, J.K. Rowling. She wrote the Harry Potter series of children's books, which have enjoyed huge international success. She now, writes fiction for adults as well. Fifth, Robert Louis Stevenson. He wrote books which are still read by adults, and children today. His most famous books include Treasure Island, Kidnapped, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Next topic of this chapter is, Leisure. People in the UK spend their leisure time, in many different ways. First, Gardening. A lot of people have gardens at home, and will spend their free time looking after them. Some people rent additional land called, an allotment, where they grow fruit, and vegetables. Gardening, and flower shows range from major national exhibitions to small local events. Many towns have garden centers selling plants, and gardening equipment. There are famous gardens to visit throughout the UK, including Kew Gardens, Sissinghurst and Hidcote in England, Craith's Castle, and Inverary Castle in Scotland, Bodnant Garden in Wales, and Mount Stewart in Northern Ireland. Second, Shopping. There are many different places to go shopping, in the UK most towns, and cities have a central shopping area, which is called the town centre. Undercover shopping centres are also common, these might be in town centres, or on the outskirts of a town or city. Most shops in the UK are open seven days a week, although trading hours on Sundays, and public holidays are generally reduced. Third, Cooking, and Food. Many people in the UK enjoy cooking. They often invite each other, to their homes for dinner. A wide variety of food is eaten in the UK because, of the country's rich cultural heritage, and diverse population. There are a variety of foods that are traditionally associated, with different parts of the UK. First, in England, roast beef, which is served with potatoes, vegetables, Yorkshire puddings, batter that is baked in the oven, and other accompaniments. Fish and chips are also popular. Second, in Wales, Welsh cakes, a traditional Welsh snack made from flour, dried fruits and spices, and served either hot or cold. 3rd. In Scotland, haggis, a sheep's stomach stuffed with offal, suet, onions and oatmeal. 4th. Northern Ireland, Ulster Fry, a fried meal with bacon, eggs, sausage, black pudding, white pudding, tomatoes, mushrooms, soda bread, and potato bread. 4th. Social networking. Social networking websites such as, Facebook, and Twitter are a popular way for people to stay in touch with friends, organize social events, and share photos, videos and opinions. Many people use social networking on their mobile phones when out, and about. YouTube, and LinkedIn is also famous in UK. 5th. Pubs, and nightclubs. Public houses, pubs, are an important part of the UK social culture. Many people enjoy meeting friends in the pub. Most communities will have a local pub that is, a natural focal point for social activities. Pub quizzes are popular. Pubs are usually open, during the day from 11 a.m., 12 noon on Sundays. Nightclubs with dancing, and music usually open and close later than pubs. The licensee decides the hours that the pub, or nightclub is open. Sixth, betting, and gambling. In the UK, people often enjoy a gamble on sports, or other events. There are also casinos in many places. You have to be 18 to go into betting shops, or gambling clubs. There is a national lottery, for which draws are made every week. You can enter by buying a ticket, or a scratch card. People under 16 are not allowed to participate in the national lottery. 7th. Pets. A lot of people in the UK have pets such as, cats, or dogs. They might have them for company, or because they enjoy looking after them. All dogs in public places must wear a collar showing the name, and address of the owner. The owner is responsible for keeping the dog under control, and for cleaning up after the animal in a public place. Vaccinations, and medical treatment for animals are available from veterinary surgeons, vets. The last topic of this chapter is, places of interest. The UK has a large network of public footpaths, in the countryside. There are also many opportunities for mountain biking, mountaineering, and hill walking. There are 15 national parks in England, Wales, and Scotland. 
They are areas of protected countryside that everyone can visit, and where people live, work and look after the landscape. There are many museums in the UK, which range from small community museums to large national and civic collections. Famous landmarks exist in towns, cities and the countryside throughout the UK most of them are open to the public to view, generally for a charge. UK Landmarks First, London Eye The London Eye is situated, on the southern bank of the River Thames, and is a Ferris wheel that is 443 feet tall. It was originally built, as part of the UK's celebration of the new millennium, and continues to be an important part of New Year celebrations. Second, Snowdonia Snowdonia is a national park in North Wales. It covers an area of 838 square miles. Its most well-known landmark is Snowdon, which is the highest mountain in Wales. Third, the Eden Project. The Eden Project is located in Cornwall, in the southwest of England. Its biomes, which are like giant greenhouses, house plants from all over the world. The Eden Project is also a charity which runs environmental and social projects internationally. Fourth, Big Ben. Big Ben is the nickname for the Great Bell of the Clock, at the Houses of Parliament in London. Many people call the clock Big Ben as well. The clock is over 150 years old, and is a popular tourist attraction. The clock tower is named, Elizabeth Tower in honor of Queen Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee in 2012.